Uh, hi, I'm Kyle Cordes at Oasis Digital, and this is a quick walkthrough of some Angular 2 code that populates the weather on a web page using Firebase and Observables. Now, the, the actual weather display we have in front of us here is pretty boring, but there's some interesting Angular 2 coding ideas going on behind the scenes. Let's go take a look. Uh, this is all visible on the web. I don't know if I have a license in here yet, but I'll get something in here to make it clear it's open source. You can use it if you like. Uh, let's look at first the index page. Uh, in the HTML here, I'm just grabbing Angular 2 materials off of a CDN, the Google provided CDN. That way I don't have any local complexity in this application about how the files are loaded. Uh, you can see here that I am using system.js configured here. That lets me do TypeScript compilation in the browser. Now we all know this is not something suitable to do in production, but it is incredibly convenient to do in development, and it means that I can serve this uh, content statically, which is what you right here, see right here using you know, the github.io, without having to arrange any kind of compilation process. Um, we kick off the whole thing by loading the app.ts module, so let's take a look at what's in there. hopefully GitHub. Well, here we go. Um, to use Angular, you have to pull things in from the Angular 2, Angular 2 module. Uh, then the only thing used on this page, the only other component used is something I call a weather panel. Uh, following the, the trend that we see really all over with Angular 2 examples, the template is right here in line. I'm not sure if this is going to survive once Angular 2 enters wide production use. I, I suspect it's more likely we'll see people transition to putting their templates in separate files. But for the moment, we are going along with the uh, industry trend of putting our templates in line in all of our example code. Uh, something we do slightly differently, though, is instead of writing the template right here, we actually put the template earlier in the file. Uh, we have found this makes it slightly easier to read by keeping the metadata for a component nice and compact and all together, rather than having it sprawled out with the big template right in the middle. This basic app component is extremely simplistic. We just get a list of cities and then we ng4 over them and display a weather panel for each one. So each of these things, rectangles, is a weather panel. Now let's look at how that works. This weather data is coming in from Firebase. And I don't think I have Firebase on the page. I think I'm actually, or I'm on the project, I'm loading Firebase from its CDN. And I'm not using any kind of Firebase Angular 2 integration yet. I assume that the Firebase people have something really exciting in development, but that's not out yet, so I've done my own thing here that I think will turn out to be at least somewhat similar to what they end up with. So let's look at the code for the weather panel. The in interesting bits you might not have seen before, if, even if you've looked at quite a few Angular 2 examples, are that I'm pulling in the async pipe and, and observable from the uh, Angular 2 package. And we'll see how those work in just a moment. Uh, next, I have my own library here called Observable Firebase. And this can convert a Firebase reference or query into either an observable object or an observable array. And we'll see that comes in very handy. Next, we have this ng-when idea. We'll see this in use. This is just like an ng-if but it captures a variable if the thing was true and if the inner template becomes live. So let's take a look here. Okay. I also have a pipe that converts seconds to a date, and we'll see what that thing trivially does. But I think I can continue on through how the, rest, how the application code works before I divert into these uh, libraries used. Uh, Firebase, I don't believe I have Firebase loading in exist this example via the module system, so this is just a way of telling TypeScript that it is okay to talk about a global called Firebase that's already sitting out there. And this is the quickest way to get up and running. I have some other examples I'm working with where I'm using Webpack that I do load Firebase's API through the, uh, through the module system, but for this example it just doesn't seem worthwhile. Okay, this template should be very straightforward if you've seen any kind of Angular 2 code before. The only interesting piece is this async, this async, and the fact that I'm using this ng-when. And we'll get back to why I had to use this ng-when idea in a moment, but let's continue on with how it works. Um, this, this weather display is actually updated over time automatically, so it doesn't look like it, because in this example the weather changes very slowly, so it's unlikely to change while we're staring at the page. But this is actually real-time, semi-real-time, soft real-time, pushed Firebase data from their public weather data example. And let's look at just how little code is needed to make that happen. Uh, this input of the city, this is just the way that 
this component is configured to talk about a specific city. Then we have an observable for current and hourly weather conditions, one each. I did not bother to type the data inside, so you'll see these uh, shortcuts of any. Uh, I, f I first wanted to put this stuff in a constructor, but it turns out you really can't do that. Uh, constructors are often not so useful in Angular components because constructor will be run before the data gets pushed in from the containing component. So really on init is much more often what you need when working with uh, Angular components that have any kind of incoming data. This URL, this just comes straight from the Firebase API documentation. We initiate, or we create a Firebase object in the normal way. We grab its child according to that city identifier that was passed in. So up to here we have just incredibly boring ordinary Firebase code. Again, nothing Angular 2 aware of this. Now here's the only bit of Angular 2 awareness. I have a generic mechanism to turn this Firebase reference or this Firebase reference into a observable object or array. And we'll study how that works in a minute, but you just assume that that works just how you'd imagine it would. And uh, you'll see that I can look at simple obvious things like a specific data point in Firebase, or I can almost as easily look at a collection of things in Firebase and use all the normal Firebase operations and then just wrap that up in an observable. It's very, very straightforward. Because it's in an observable, you have to use the async pipe to get the data back out, and this automatically gives you that push behavior all the way to the template, which by the way I think is just a fantastic feature of Angular 2 that we're probably going to see used very, very pervasively in Angular 2 software. Now this when part, the reason I needed a when here is that there's no way I could find in the syntax to compose waiting for something asynchronously and then looking up a property of it. So the way that I found to do that was to wrap it in this when that I created, which basically it's, this is just like an ng if, except that it captures a variable. So I use the when to wait until data arrives, and of course remain active as the data changes, and then that'll publish the contents, right? So it'll un this async will unwrap the observable and get the actual data out of the observable, store it in this local C, and then make it available in the template here. And that, of course, is handled for me without any spe anything special when I'm using ng4, because ng4 was already going to have the right behavior of waiting until this thing returns something that's not null, and then instantiating one or more of these. Okay, so to, just to review, this is ordinary templating except for this async and this when mechanism, and this code doesn't have anything about keeping up with the changes or registering or unregistering any listeners. Uh, you'll note that if if the template was never instantiated, this would never even make a connection because when you say new Firebase child and so on, there's nothing here to get the data out. This observable is what's actually going to get the data out, and this is a cold observable. So you, the data actually does need to be pulled out before anything really happens. Okay, so let's look at how those things work. This observable wrapper, I think I'll probably just go over the simple one which is the observable object wrapper. This just uses the observable API in a fairly straightforward way to take this query and then call the on and off, register the on and off uh, events for it, just like you find in the Firebase documentation, and then to, as values arrive, push those through as the result of the observable. Uh, like many observables that wrap third-party things, this one doesn't have any sense of completion. So since there's nothing from Firebase that ever tells you this data is done forever, then this observable also will never mark the, the stream as complete. Uh, we might want to look at that in the future and see if there is any hint that you ever get from Firebase that some, some data is not available anymore. Maybe this could go away. But for now, this observable just holds the data and shows the current state of this thing, or maybe it might show null someday, but it'll never mark itself completed. I won't go into this one in as much detail, but this is a implementation in the form of an observable of the idiosyncratic Firebase API for pseudo arrays. So Firebase has this notion of array-like objects, which it sends you these four categories or these four events about those objects, and this code does the right things to manipulate a local array following that data, and then it publishes each new version of that array as a result of the observable. And uh, I'm a little leery of these mutable data structures everywhere, so I made a, de a defensive copy of the array as I passed it out the observable. That way nobody consuming this observable could accidentally break 
how this thing works. Okay, I think that is all the code here that's worth seeing. Yeah, the seconds to date pipe, that's just an extremely simple example of a Firebase pipe. Yeah, that's all there is. So here we have, in a small amount of code, a real-time push updatable Firebase-based weather app using Angular 2 and Observables. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, I'm really excited about building things at scale with the kind of capabilities you see demonstrated here. Bye-bye.